Hello, and welcome to On the Shelves at ACPL. Today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite genres, which are historical mysteries. And my group of books today are all books that have women as the protagonist. They are the ones solving the mysteries. Uh, these are Most of these are a part of a series, and so we're going to be talking for the most part about the first book in the series, although a couple of times we didn't have the first book. So I'm going to show you the second book, but tell you the title of both the first and the second. So let's get started. Our first series is the Lady Emily series by Tasha Alexander. This is the second book in the series. The first is called And Only to Deceive. This one is called A Poisoned Season. When the series begins, Lady Emily has lost her husband. She finds out that he greatly admired her, not only because of her beauty, but because of her intelligence and that was very much of a surprise in the late 1800s. One married for prestige or for money or for social standing uh, or, to, and, or to maintain said items, uh, you didn't necessarily know your fiance all that well. So she married him, he went on a trip, he died, and now she's trying, she's really learning about him post uh, death. She is also learning about him through his best friend, Colin, who has kind of inserted himself into her life, partially to watch over her and partially because he believes that her husband was murdered and is trying to solve the mystery. And of course, Lady Emily ends up helping him. Uh, in the second book, Lady Emily uh, finds herself attracted to and dating Colin her husband's best friend, and saw and trying to figure out what's going on uh, with a cat burglar who is breaking in and stealing priceless artifacts from the people in uh, English society. But she also discovers that this person has a fixation on her and is basically stalking her. I'll, and and there is a murder of one of the owners of one of these artifacts. So uh, Emily and her new beau, Colin, try to figure out and who this cat burglar is and see if they can stop him before he steals something else or kills again. Our next series are the Jane Austen Mysteries by Stephanie Barron. And this first one is Jane and the Unpleasantness at Scargrave Manor. If the author of these, this series imagined what would happen if Jane Austen actually went and solved mysteries. And so in this first edition, she goes to visit her friend at Scargrave Manor. So her friend is recently married to the Earl, um, maybe about three months. But while Jane is there, the Earl dies. And it was a fairly violent, poisoning kind of death. Uh, at first, I think the coroner and everyone think, oh, it's just because he had an over-fondness for wine and food, but Jane's and other people start to realize that perhaps it was a poisoning. And then, unfortunately, her friend is accused of the murder and for having a relationship with the, with the nephew of the Earl. And again, unfortunately, she actually does uh, have a crush on him, and perhaps he uh, returns her feelings, but neither one of them were involved in this murder. So at least that's what her friend thinks. So Jane must solve the mystery and find out what happened to the Earl. Our next series are the Mr. and Mrs. Darcy Mysteries by Carrie Babri. The first one is Pride and Precedence. Uh, or a truth universally acknowledged. Mr. and Mrs. Darcy have just gotten back from their honeymoon. 
find out that Caroline Bingley is engaged to be married to a wonderful American, but now all these strange and scary things are happening to not only Caroline, but the entire Bingley family. Mr. and Mrs. Darcy investigate and try to find out what is going on and see if they can save their friends from death and disaster. Our next series is The Molly Murphy Mysteries by Reese Bowen. The first one is called Murphy's Law. Molly has grown up in Ireland. You're never, she says, she, you're never quite sure what you're capable of until something happens. Uh, through no fault of her own, she has to kill someone uh, to save herself and is pretty much given the option of, hey, you might want to go to America, start a new life. So she does so. She, on Ellis Island, however, she is so excited about being in America. Uh, she, on Ellis Island, there is a murder. Someone is killed and she is suspected of the murder simply because of her history and where she was. But she is allowed to leave Ellis Island and go into Manhattan, possibly because the, uh, she and the police uh, officer that is investigating the crime uh, develops feelings for each other. But she is allowed to go into Manhattan and finds herself having to solve the mystery. This is set in the early 20th century uh, and involves a lot of great details of the history of uh, of New York City in the early uh, 1900s. Our next series is also by Reese Bowen. It is Her Royal Spinus, and the first one is called Her Royal Spinus. Uh, in this series, we are moving back over to England in the 1930s. Our main character, who goes by the name Georgie because her official name is way too long, uh, is a minor royal, but one who is also broke. And so she uh, is living with her brother and his wife in their ancestral castle, and her brother has cut her off. So she, and wants her to marry, uh, marry not, you know, to get money and to get out of his house. She is not interested in marrying Fishface, as she calls him. So she moves to London and moves into their London residence without her brother really knowing uh, all that she is up to. She tries to find a job. She ends up being called in to the uh, to, to see the queen and the queen asks her to spy on his son at a weekend uh, party that is coming up. And so Georgie goes to the party and tries to find out what's going on with her son. And she also ends up cleaning houses, but in, uh, in disguise. So no one really knows that it is a royal cleaning their house. So if this sounds interesting to you, this is a fun, this is a very fun series to read. Our next series is The Observations of Miss Dido Kent. And the first one is Belfield Hall. The author is Anna Dean. In this first installment of this series, a young lady calls her aunt Miss Dido Kent to come and help because her fiance has broken up with her. At their engagement party, they're dancing, everyone is happy. A gentleman taps her fiance on the shoulder, tells her something, he is visibly upset, and then he breaks off the engagement. At the next morning, a body of a young lady is found on their property. So the young lady calls her aunt, Dido to come and investigate, find out why her fiance left her, what upset him so, and maybe about this dead body and is there a connection between the two. This is set in 
England in the 18, early 1800s. Uh, so if you enjoy that period, this is a great series. Our next series are the Daisy Dalrymple series. And the first one is The Winter Garden Mystery by Carola Dunn. In this book, we are introduced to Daisy, who lives in England in the 1920s. She is shocking the world or shocking her little world because she is not staying in her home until she gets married. She is moving out and she is going to support herself. She starts writing articles about gardens and homes, which are published in newspapers and magazines. When she goes to write one uh, feature on a house and a garden, a young lady who works at the house has been murdered and another young man who is one of the gardeners she was involved with has been ar arrested for the murder. But Daisy does not believe that he actually committed the crime. So she enlists the help of her friend Alec who works for Scotland Yard and tries to find out what really happened, who was really the murderer. Our next book is Murder in an English Village by Jessica Ellicott. This is the first in a series and it's the Beryl and Edwina mysteries. So as you might guess, our two main characters are Beryl and Edwina. Beryl is an American, she's brash, Edwina is a prim and proper English woman. This is set in the 1920, right after the Great War has ended. Beryl uh, has left the United States because of prohibition. Sees no reason to sit around and drink bathtub gin. She'd rather go to England and have adventures there. Edwina is, has fallen on hard times after the war and really needs a lodger. And so Beryl, her old chum from school, crashes literally into her house and they decide to be roommates and they also decide to open a private investigative uh, business to both support themselves and to add that spice of adventure that Beryl so much wants. So their first crime is figuring out uh, who killed someone in their sleepy English town and uh, we'll see if they are able to do so and keep themselves safe. Our next book is Murder in the Queen's Wardrobe by Kathy Lynn Emerson. This is a Mistress Jaffrey thriller. Mistress Jaffe is a independent woman of means in the 19, 1580s. So we've gone further back in history than some of our other books. She is recruited to be a spy by uh, Queen Elizabeth I's spy master. She is placed with Lady Mary uh, to spy upon her and make sure that what sh that she is not getting uh, into a plot to murder Queen Elizabeth or to try to take over her throne. And so in Lady Mary's court, uh, Mistress Joffrey has an excellent handle of, on languages, on ciphers, so she is the perfect spy. But of course, there are other nobles who are not interested at all in her succeeding as a spy, and they threaten her estranged husband and her ward. So what will Mistress Joffrey do to keep everyone safe and find out who are the plotters? Our next series are the Jane Prescott Mysteries. The first is Death of No Importance, and this one is Death of a New American. They are by Maria Fredericks. Jane is a lady's maid in the United States right after the turn of the century, and she works for the Benchley family. 
She travels with the Benchleys to the Tylers. The Benchleys' oldest daughter is engaged to the Tylers' son. They are there to celebrate the upcoming nuptials. But Sophia, who is the nursemaid for the younger Tyler children, is found murdered one night when Jane is awoken by a scream. She runs to the nursery and finds Sophia dead and the baby lying on the floor. Everyone assumes that this was a kidnapping attempt, someone trying to get back at Mr. Tyler, who has prosecuted a lot of nefarious men. But Jane is not sure if that is actually what happened from things that she had observed, from talking a little bit with Sophia. She is not sure that is what happened. And her friend Michael is a newspaper reporter and asked her to investigate. So if you would like to find out what really happened, pick up Death of a New American. Our next book is Dr. Death by Lene. Caber Caberol. It is the first in a series about a young lady named Madeline Carno. Madeline lives in the late 1800s, 1897, I believe, and she wants to be a surgeon like her dad. She wants to dissect, dissect corpses. This is not something that is, un that is seemly for men of the age, much less a woman. So when a young lady dies of a mysterious death, she goes with her father to help him as he investigates. They are not allowed to do a full autopsy. Just look at some exterior uh, features of her body. And then the priest, which had also, uh, who had sat vigil over her, he dies as well. And Madeline and her father are at a loss. And so Madeline goes behind the walls of the convent where, where this young lady lived and tries to find out what led to her death and what got her sick, what got the priest sick, what is going on in this convent and this town. Our next book is The Mangle Street Murders by M.R.C. Kazian. It is the first in the Gower Street Detective series. We have two Characters that rival Holmes and Watson. Sidney Grice believes that he is the greatest private detective in the world in 1882. And he has a new ward, March Middleton. And when March comes, she states the fact that she wants to be his new assistant. And Sidney says that is not a woman's job. Uh, but he discovers after a grisly murder happens that he's having trouble solving that perhaps March isn't so useless after all. The two of them go around London trying to figure out why, uh, you know, what's going on with this murder, what, what happened, who is involved. Sydney is convinced at every turn and everything that they discover that there's that the person who has been charged is guilty, but March believes that he is not and does her best to uh, to convince Sydney of this person's innocence. So if you'd like to know which one of them won, Sydney or March, who was correct? And if you like your mysteries with a little bit of humor, uh, and uh, in that Sherlock Holmes vein, you will enjoy the Mangle Street murders. Our next series are the Maggie Hope Mysteries. And the first one in the series is Mrs. 
Mr. Sorry, Mr. Churchill's secretary. This one is Prince El Princess Elizabeth's spy, and they are by Susan Elia McNeil. In the first book in the series, Maggie has become becomes the secretary for Winston Churchill. Her mind is sharp. She is a mathematical genius, understands codes. So she gets assigned, after being Mr. Churchill's secretary, she gets assigned to MI5, and she thinks, this is my break, I am going to be a spy. But her first assignment is to watch over uh, Princess Elizabeth and her younger sister. And she goes in as a, un undercover as a tutor for the to the daughters and try, is trying to find out who is threatening the life of the two young royals. Our next series are the Lady Dunbridge Mysteries. The first one is Ask Me No Questions, and the author is Shelley Noble. Lady Dunbridge has uh, lost her husband and her father would like for her to move back in to marry someone else, but that is not what she is interested in doing. So she decides to travel to immigrate to the United States. She looks up one of her old friends who is living in New York City and asks if she can help her set up a household in New York. So when she gets off the ship, she and her maid meet her friend, Bev, and Bev's husband is driving the car. So she, they get all of their luggage down, and then Bev goes to find her husband to bring the car around, and then uh, Lady Dunbridge, otherwise known as Philomena or Phil, hears Bev scream. And it turns out that someone has killed her husband and Bev is accused or is suspected of being the killer. So she arrives in America and immediately is pulled into a mystery of what happened to her friend's husband. Uh, along the way, she meets a very handsome but infuriating police a uh, man who is investigating this crime and into uh, Bev's husband's world of horse racing and, and raising horses. Lady uh, Philomena is not afraid of going anywhere or doing anything to solve the mystery. Uh, this is a fun book uh, set in the early 1900s in New York City. Our next book is an, a part, the first of the Elena Standish series by Anne Perry, and the first one book is Death in Focus. Elena is on vacation in Italy. She's having a wonderful time. She meets a young man named Ian, and they decide to take the train. She decides she can't be separated from Ian quite yet. They just met. He seems like a really fantastic man. But on the way, uh, on their meandering way back home, uh, Ian is, mur is killed. But before he dies, he gives her a message and says, you must pass this on to my contacts. Meanwhile, at home, Elena's father and grandfather, who is the former head of MI6, although no one knows that, uh, are very concerned about her and are trying to help her in different in different ways. They are working together somewhat, but not but not really because you know even at this point, uh, Elena's father does not know that his dad was the he former head of MI6. He just thought he worked in a boring government job. When Elena does not make it home, they do all they can send allies to her to help her 
uh, get out of this very precarious predicament she has gotten herself into. This occurs in the uh, late 1930s as the uh, Adolf Hitler and his party are gaining power and uh, World War II is imminent. Our next series is a the Lady Grey Edward Brisbane series. The title of the first is Silent in the Grave and the author is Deanna, Deanna Rayborn. Lady Grey is hosting a party. Her husband Edward gets a, an ominous note and he wants to show it to Nicholas Brisbane, who is his investigator. But before he can show the note, he dies at this party. Brisbane comes to Lady Julia Gray and says that this was murder. At first, Julia does not believe him, but then she also finds this ominous note and realizes that Brisbane is probably correct, that it is murder. So they join forces and solve the mystery of what happened to her husband, what this note means, and why was he murdered. This is set during Regency England and is very atmospheric and is, actually, is a really wonderful uh, mystery. Our next series is set in the 1800s in San Francisco. They are the Sarah Wilson Mysteries. The first one is Murder on Knob Hill, and the author is Shirley Tallman. Sarah is a strong, independent young lady. She wants to be an attorney. She has passed her bar exam, but no firm will hire her. She goes in for an interview and through a little subterfuge and maybe a little blackmail, ends up being hired as the first female attorney in this stodgy old firm and even gets her first client, which is a young society matron who is accused of killing her husband. Sarah does not believe that she did it, but finds that defending her is going to be much more difficult as she also has a secret lover and is not going to be seen as very sympathetic to any judge or jury. But when the killer kills several more people, Sarah realizes maybe she's bitten off more than she can chew, but she throws off the attorney's office where she works and society's norms and goes into Chinatown and many other places that are seen as unsavory to solve this mystery. Our next series is the Counterfeit Lady series. The first is City of Lies and the author is Victoria Thompson. Elizabeth Miles uses her wiles to defraud men who uh, have more money than they have since. She runs a con along with her brother and cheats a man named Mr. Thornton out of a fair amount of money. Mr. Thornton is chasing her through the city and she falls in with a group of women who are, who are marching on the White House for uh, women's right to vote. At first, she does not believe that she's going to have anything in common with these ladies. Uh, she lives on the edges of society. They are all very well-respected women uh, in Washington, and they are uh, all rich, but she finds a few people who she really connects with, and one of them has a son who is kind of pretty sharp and might actually figure out what she is and who she is. And meanwhile, Thornton is circling and trying to find a way to get to her. So can she keep herself safe? Can she help her new friends with their problems? You'll have to read the book to find out. 
Our next series is also by Victoria Thompson. It is her Gaslight Mysteries. And this one is Murder on Sisters Row. Uh, the first in the series that we have is Murder on Lenox Hill. But we don't have it right in front of us, so we're going to talk about Murder on Sisters Row. Our main character is a midwife named Sarah Brandt. She partners up with a police detective called Frank Malloy, and they solve crimes in 19th century New York. Sarah is called to provide her services at, at a beautiful mansion, and when she gets there, she finds out that it is, in fact, a brothel. The woman who is giving birth says, please help me. I am being held here against my will. The madam is planning on selling my baby. Frank Malloy says, this is not something you need to get involved with, but Sarah disagrees. And she seeks the help of a lady named Victoria Van Orner, who is known for helping women in this situation. But Sarah realizes maybe she has not done the world's best thing when Miss Van Orner ends up dead and really not sure who killed her and was it the involvement in this young lady's case. So Sarah investigates, finds out unsavory things both about Miss Van Orner and her charity, but also about the young lady and the baby she saved. Our next series are The Best Crawford Mysteries by Charles Todd. The first one is A Duty to the Dead. And in this series, Bess is a World War I nurse in 1916. She works on ships that are taking young men back to England, uh, as well as working in a nursing station on the front. So she is on the ship. She is taking a group of men back to England for further uh, rehabilitation and help. And some of them may be staying in England because their, their, their wounds are too much uh, to be redeployed. And talking to one young man, he is dying unexpectedly. He gives her a message, please tell my brother this. So it, of course, it takes Bess a while to actually get to go visit uh, this young man's brother. But a few months later, she is able to do so. And he and everyone are kind of indifferent to the message. They kind of dismiss it of all. I don't know what he was talking about and she finds herself embroiled in trying to figure out what this message really meant. Is the brother hiding something? Uh, what's going on? And what, what can she do to, uh, to, help the, to help this young man who died in her arms? Our final series is the Maisie Dobbs series by Jacqueline Winspear. The first book is titled Maisie Dobbs. Uh, Maisie becomes a maid in Lady Rowena's home when she is 13 years old. Lady Rowena is a suffragist and takes Maisie under her wing because she can see how intelligent and how sharp Maisie is. Uh, she also enlists the help of her friend Maurice, who is a private investigator, in training Maisie. Maisie decides that, or is, a, or is able to go off to college when she turns 18, but unfortunately, World War I arrives and she doesn't end up going to college. She ends up going to the front and becoming a nurse. She loses a lot during the war, including her fiance, who has physical as well as mental inter injuries from the shelling and just the horror of war. Maisie decides to become a private investigator like her mentor, Maurice. 
hangs up her shingle in 1929 and takes on uh, some cases. And her first case involves infidelity, but it also involves a place called The Retreat, where a man has set up a place, a working farm, where men who were physically or mentally or both uh, incapacitated during the war, uh, they can work there and maybe recover some of their senses. And unfortunately, uh, that is where Maisie's cases lead. Uh, she has two cases that seem unrelated, but, all, but are both related to the retreat. This is a wonderful series. It starts, as I said here, in, uh, the, right after the end of World War I, and it goes forward now. Her latest books are uh, at the start of World War II. So definitely a great series to pick up. So those are some of my favorite historical mysteries involving women as the investigators. If you want to put any of these on hold, please go to our website, alamancelibraries.org, click on catalog, find the book that you're interested in and place it on hold, or you can call any of our branches and we can help you do that. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and we'll see you next time on the shelves at ACPL.